We're here at Central Park, New York, and I'm standing in front of a statue of William Shakespeare. This statue actually was conceived to commemorate the 300th anniversary of Shakespeare's birth. And in order to pay for this statue, the Booth brothers agreed to participate in a fundraising performance. They were participating in a performance of Julius Caesar at the Winter Garden Theater here in New York City. When lovers of Shakespeare thought about how to raise the money, the very first thing they thought about was the Booth family. Because the Booth family was the premier family of Shakespeare actors in the United States, up to, certainly up to that point in time, which was the year 1864. And their father, Junius Brutus Booth, was acclaimed as being the leading Shakespearean actor of the American stage. And three of his sons followed in his footsteps by becoming extremely prominent Shakespearean actors and, and indeed stars in their own right. Those three sons were June Booth, or Junius Brutus Booth Jr., the oldest of the American children. Edwin Booth, who would become known as probably the greatest Shakespearean actor ever in the course of his lengthy career. And John Wilkes Booth, the youngest of the three, who critics said was also the most talented of the three. They, they referred to him as a genius. And when they talked about John Wilkes Booth, one thing they raved about was his ability to step inside of the character, his ability to convey the personality of the character that he was portraying. And he did it to such an extent that he would introduce innovations into the acting that other, others playing the same character never had thought of. It wasn't in the script. He would, he would improvise in ways that critics found intriguing and, and, and they said it's very worth it to come out to see what John Wilkes Booth does with this character. Well, on this occasion of this benefit though, which happened on November 25th of 1864, John Wilkes Booth didn't play the lead. He, he left that to his brother Edwin, who played the role of Brutus, the assassin of Julius Caesar, the lead in this tra tragedy about the efforts of a hero to save his republic from being taken over by a tyrant. That's what Julius Caesar is about. And in, indeed, it, it seems to have inspired John Wilkes Booth in his assassination of Abraham Lincoln. And when he did assassinate Lincoln, which was about six months later, he shouted out a line from Julius Caesar, Six Semper Tyrannis, as if it was a theatrical performance. And in fact, the people who were in Ford's theater at the time initially thought that it wasn't an assassination. They thought it was part of the performance because John Wilkes Booth did it just as if he was acting a role. Well, on November 25th of 1864, John Wilkes Booth was here in New York for one of his rare performances here in New York. And the, the theater was absolutely filled to overflowing. And in fact, they had even scalped some of the tickets. It was that sought after. While the performance was ongoing on the stage, Confederate agents started a series of fires in hotel rooms all around New York, in more than 20 hotel rooms. And one of them was right next to the Winter Garden Theater where the performance was, was going. And people came into the theater and started yelling fire. And immediately there was a panic that set in on, on, the, on the people in the theater. Immediately they started milling around and looking towards the exits. But the Booth brothers came out on the stage and said, there, there's no fire in here, you can, you can relax. It isn't, it isn't anything we need to leave about. And they calmed the audience down and eventually they continued with the performance. The terrorist attack that night was actually rather unsuccessful. It, it succeeded in starting fires, but they really weren't hot enough to start the building on fire anywhere. And they were put out by the fire department. But this was the phase where the Confederacy actually was turning to more unorthodox methods of trying to resist the, the, the North and to try to 
fight the will of people in the north in order to uh, uh, get them to stop taking over the south militarily, which is what they were doing to preserve the Union. There were Confederate cabinet members in Montreal who were really coordinating these efforts. Then it didn't just involve the terrorist attack here in New York. It also involved, for example, bank robberies that they did up in upstate New York. And it involved a plot to kidnap the President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. And John Wilkes Booth, we still don't know exactly how he became involved in that plot. We do know he went to Montreal. We do know that he met with Confederate agents there. We do know that they put him in touch with the Confederate Secret Service agents that were in Southern Maryland. They were basically Southern sympathizers who were willing to help with the kidnapping and to help with transporting Lincoln across the Potomac and, and into Richmond, which was the objective of the kidnapping. We also know, well, we don't know, we strongly suspect that they financed Booth. Now, John Wilkes Booth was a wealthy man. He had amassed in his career $100,000, which was an unheard of sum of money through his acting. But he had also lost money. John Wilkes Booth had purchased oil property in Pennsylvania, near Franklin, Pennsylvania, and he had not re recovered anything on his investment. In fact, he had a well that actually produced 25 barrels of, of, of crude oil per day. That actually may have made him some money, but in trying to get more, they exploded uh, a, a, an explosion in the well, and it made the well go dry, and after that, they got nothing. John Wilkes Booth ended up essentially uh, disposing of his Pennsylvania oil holdings for nothing. And at that time, he dedicated himself virtually full-time. He gave up his acting career. He did perform in this benefit on November 25th, 1864, but he basically gave up his acting career to become a terrorist at that point in time and to, to, to coordinate this effort to kidnap Lincoln, which later morphed into an assassination of Lincoln. Booth didn't want people to know that he was losing money or that he was spending all of his money on this plot. He, he, he told his conspirators, he told others, oh, this is all paid for by oil. He would take them out to dinner and say, oil pays for this. In reality, we think he had gold from the Confederate Treasury that paid for this. And it paid for some of his other conspirators, such as Lewis Powell, who would join him in January of 1865. More than likely, that was gold from the Confederate Treasury that paid for Powell uh, to come to Washington, D.C., and, and eventually he would uh, assassinate or attempt to assassinate Secretary of State William Seward. But John Wilkes Booth, even though he was deep in his kidnapping plot, he came to New York on November 25th, 1864. He acted with his brothers, and they raised the money for this statue we see behind me. And that's why we're here as part of our Profiles in Terrorism series.